Now, every day of this Congress, what we've decided to do for you is put together some recommendations, if you like, the best of Congress. And who better to do that than members of the Programme Committee? After all, it was them that put it together. So, for our Tuesday events, we have with us Luigi Nudi and Leszek Ciprinyak. Leszek, Luigi, you're very welcome. What have you seen and what would you recommend? So let's start with you, Leszek. Well, I started today's morning with Claude Barnard lecture, which was delivered by Professor Michael Nauk, the name which needs no introduction. It's one of the three, if not the first leader in Incretin research. Uh, his paper from 1986 really started the whole uh, current wave and interest in Incretin hormones. Uh, it was an exciting lecture, not just because it was Michael now who spent decades now on Incretin research, but also because Claude Barnard which was well over 100 years ago, did similar research at that time on gastrointestinal tract, on glucose, and uh, Michael referred to this, uh, his activities during his lecture. But we just had a unique opportunity to listen to the summary overview of his work, what he's done for these decades, and we also were able to learn what the current standpoint viewpoint is and there's always never better thing than listen to people who really invented something discovered something designed research run the research and there are wrote papers which we read and cite and show during our presentations so if anyone wants to know where we are today with incretins with incretins based therapies i would strongly encourage to go on the esd website and just just listen to this lecture again. I will do it for sure because you will always pick up some new things when you listen to it things was second or third time. Brilliant. It was very it good was and also a masterclass. Uh, well, I know Michael personally. He visited Poland a few times. He takes regularly part in our national meetings, annual meetings, and also the way he delivered it with a bit of sense of humor uh, was just very pleasant. Okay, so that's one for your list, everybody. Luigi, what did you see? Well, I was at the Goji lecture, lecture where Professor Horowitz spoke about gastroparesis. A very elegant lecture. He's from Adelaide and he was born and he lives there and he has done all the studies there. He also watches cricket there. A very nice uh, gentleman, I would say and a scientist. He did some seminar work on the mechanism of gastroparesis. It was a devastating complication for our patient and we still struggle in uh, helping them. And I think it was very well delivered and uh, very uh, step by step along the way, uh, very accessible I would say for the diverse uh, background of the audience and uh, really fascinating. A uh, bit sad on the side that we were still looking for something that can ha have an impact on, on our patient. But certainly, I'm sure he has put this problem more on the table so clinicians are more aware of it. Uh, because sometimes we tend to, okay, there's nothing to do, it doesn't exist, but actually it does exist and it really affects patient's life. And uh, uh, I think it was very well delivered. You grasp the, 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 is there, please do something. And hopefully it will stimulate more research and more engagement from anybody of us to, at the end we have to help patients. Uh, uh, and actually what unites both of those is that both of them had a, were doing something at the beginning of their careers which was really difficult and nobody thought was worth looking into. Yeah, I mean, Michael Knack, certainly. Yeah, they had he very was, few followers at yes. the very beginning. If I may add what Luigi said, I remember this was my early years in medicine in general, but I remember late 1990s when the issue of gastroparesis, autonomic neuropathy in general, uh, was quite important, popular, and well researched. And Michael, I remember his lectures 20 years back at the ASD and also at the ADA. And then, after I would say like 10 years ago, it was 
wasn't that frequently touched subject. Now it comes back also because we have newer medication and we have medications like all incretin based therapies. This is something common between these lectures which affect uh, gastric motility or GI tract motility in general. So uh, it's always exciting to see someone, as you said, who did it years ago, then the subject was somewhat quieter and not so much talked about and now it's going back. Uh, it's just fascinating to look, to, to watch how the science evolves and develops in general. So this is also an, an important aspect of this talk. And what else did you see, Luigi? What are the other sessions? I was uh, briefly, because I was delayed about three hours today, to a session on cardiovascular. And uh, I found fascinating some uh, presentation on microRNAs. I don't want to go into many details, but uh, clearly... This is a man whose heart beats faster at the mention of microRNAs. <laughs> anyway, uh, but it, it is really uh, uh, it's something that has been, I don't know, identified, described in the last few years and have uh, been characterized and uh, uh, certainly tools that could be utilized for target for treatment one in the future. Uh, still, of course, uh, you, we answer uh, one question and we have uh, 10 more to answer and so on. So uh, uh, there's a bit of journey to go through, but uh, again, something new, something exciting to look forward for the future. And it's it, 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 very simple. When I was a student, we have metformin and sulfonylurea, and today we have a lot of other different drugs. We have technology for insulin infusion. I mean, uh, it's changed dramatically how we treat patients. And I'm sure now, here, myself as a senior uh, doctor, uh, I tell to my students, listen, listen what you have today and maybe in 20 years or so, who knows what uh, is there on the table to help our patients. So it's fascinating to see this thing growing and new ideas and new challenges in some way and uh, stimulate our little brains to move forward. Another one from you, Leszek. Well, I was chairing a session on uh, new technologies in general. The title was Fighting Diabetes uh, with Tubes, uh, Sensors and Catheters. And uh, we had six presentations. Some of them were really exciting, like uh, the data were presented on uh, the insertion of a special plastic tube uh, into jejunum, which uh, limits the absorption of nutrients. This is the method uh, we've known for quite some time, but the data were presented from over 1,000 patients and the benefits it gives in weight loss and in glucose control. And the presenter also showed some cases of patients with, well, incredible results. And what was interesting, that you insert this device for a year, but the effect for weight loss and glucose control was maintained for the next two, three years. And this is also fascinating. So uh, that was extremely interesting. The other thing from uh, Professor Havorka's group, the paper presented on a closed loop uh, pumps, closed loop system using type 2 diabetes patients, uh, being already treated for eight years with insulin, uh, with long-standing type 2 diabetes, also with excess and results. And of course, these studies generate plenty of questions about the costs, uh, about who is eligible to use these modern treatments. Another one about modern treatments was it was largely very much awaited results from the two-year study about spinal stimulation in patients with painful polyneuropathy. Over 200 patients, study run mostly in the US. Uh, I've been following the study. Uh, I'm personally interested because we have many patients with painful neuropathy and in these patients sometimes treatment available treatment simply doesn't work or works very little and also the results here are impressive it's a kind of invasive procedure you, you put a special electrode into the canal into your vertebrae spine but still it works and it's been shown it works for two years the question is how long patients could be using that sort of a, a 
if our listeners, viewers haven't ever heard about it, you can imagine that it's a kind of a pacemaker, but it's not inserted in, in the heart, but it's inserted in, into the vertebrae spine. So that's uh, really exciting modern research studies, but also having a very, I would say, huge clinical dimension because it is all about helping patients in whom traditional treatment, mostly pharmacotherapy, uh, doesn't work as well as we would expect. So again, uh, please go on a website if you haven't seen it uh, and uh, just watch it again because you will see uh, absolutely top-notch research, sometimes controversial, but this is the research which really moves our field forward. And first of all, it offers help to the patients uh, what we really haven't been thinking of in, in recent years. There are, there are eye-opening, thought-provoking studies. So I want each of you to sum up this day, Tuesday, in one word. So Luigi, one word to describe today. Can I do two? Teach, uh, a lot of teaching and excitement. Very good. Well, I would, if one word I would probably use, apart from exciting, everyone says it's, uh, it's here being exciting. And of course it is. We've, we haven't had meetings for three years. Uh, but I would use the word enrichment. It's just enriching our knowledge, expanding it beyond our expectations, if I can use a few more words. Fantastic. So thank you to both of you. So you've had then the Camilla Golgi lecture, uh, the um, Michael Nauck lecture, uh, the Claude Bernard lecture, of course the most prestigious of all the named lectures here at the EASD. That session, just say the name again. Yeah, fighting diabetes with tube sensors and scanners, tube sensors and catheters. And a very good session from the cardiovascular uh, one. What was the title? Oh, that was too long. I can't that, remember. That's going to tax <laughs> but him. It was OP8. OP8. There you go. So those are some sessions for you to specifically hunt out if you didn't see them and you are online, or even if you're here and you just had so much excitement elsewhere that you couldn't go to them. Do look them up. And again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And we'll be back tomorrow.